how do you get through your week without going crazy? Presumably, you are so run off your feet, you don't know whether you're in Bombay or Morecambe Bay from one minute to the next. Yeah, I mean, not enough hours in the day, um, not enough uh, days in the week. Uh, I work hard, though. I mean, I seriously work hard, and you know, I, I, I work three times harder than anyone. That's we believe you. I mean, we've seen it. Yeah. We know that. We know that you can't be here today and running three other restaurants at the same time without working hard. Yeah, you know, and so I push it to the absolute max. But I've always been taught by my mother to work as hard as you can, as young as you can, and that's exactly what I'm doing. So, you know, if I had to slow down and start contemplating and sort of thinking about, ooh, you know, how can I make my life easier? easier how do i get you know a palace in the country i don't really get interested in that you know i enjoy my time i'm flat out and i i, I don't want to stop being flat out in our remaining moments let's just talk about the new book the previous book was a massive success around the world actually why did you write this next one what has it got in it that wasn't in the last one yeah i mean playing with fire is something that uh you know i laid myself bare i mean everyone thinks that you're successful multimillionaire, and all that stuff and you've got any car you want and all that stuff but um i've taken huge risks alex in a way that i've you know, I, I've been in rented accommodation. I didn't have the money to pay the rent on certain occasions. And I got, you know, investigated by the Inland Revenue. And I've had huge bills for tax to pay. And my, my neck's standing above the water. And I'm still standing strong. Um, and the restaurants are making money. But I've been on the brink of disaster in terms of financial uh, ruin. And, you know, when you look at the investment in Claridge's in New York. And so when you get criticized for what you do and you put all this money into it, it's, you know, sort of 10, 11, 12, 30 million dollars. Uh, projects that cost a lot of money that's out of your pocket I don't have partners I don't have any big corporate company behind it it's all family run my father-in-law runs the business I run the restaurants and you know that's how it works we take risks so anyone that takes risks out there uh, understands that you know that's why I'm firm that's why I'm assertive I don't want to become personal with them but listen I put the money in my ball's on the line so it's my decision you don't like that look for a new job End of story. I get the understanding that you'll be less concerned from a journalist saying, I don't like Gordon Ramsay, than me saying I didn't enjoy my starter. <laughs> yeah, I said, listen, if it wasn't right, we wouldn't send it out of the kitchen. Um, I need um, criticism. We thrive on that. There's no two ways about that. You know, a food critic today, if I had to wake up in the morning and listen to every level of criticism I've taken now at the age of 40, trust me, you'd be seeing me, witnessing me, watching me cook appallingly on Ready Steady Twat. <laughs> Perfect way to end the interview. Very finally, my grandma always says, I love that Gordon Ramsay, but why does he need to use the F word? Yeah, good question. Uh, I get the same from my own mum. Um, and she always tells me, look, yeah, yeah, you're in a high pressure environment. Is there any way you can not use that word? Because I didn't bring you up like that. And I say, mum, I honestly don't mean it. It's just sometimes the Muppets I have to work with. You're an inspiration to so many, and this book is fabulous. It's in your stores now. Thank you so much for talking to me. My pleasure.